Hello, and welcome back to HGTV Handmade. I am Maria Antoinette, and today we are going to take this very common floor lamp and we are gonna make it unique and beautiful. Let's get started. All right, guys, you have seen this lamp everywhere. You literally can get it for under eight bucks. It's a staple in a lot of college rooms, maybe even in your home. But today, we are going to jazz it up. How are we gonna jazz it up, you say? two liter soda pop bottles. So our first step is going to be removing all labels, all of that good stuff, but there's also this date on it. We're gonna remove that as well because we're going to be spray painting these eventually and the paint just won't take over that. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of fingernail polish remover. Wipe that on off. Super easy. Now let's get to the cutting. Before we start on the next step, we want to make sure that we take all safety precautions to the max. Put down a cutting board because we are about to cut with a utility knife. We're going to take our two liter bottle and we're going to lay it on its side. We're going to go right at the neck. So right here, there's like a little ridge. We want to cut as close to that as possible. Just like that, we have the top off. A little bit of muscle goes a long way for this project. Now for our second part, we are going to cut this two liter bottle in half, but that is not going to be the final cut. There are two natural ridges at the top of the bottom. For one of them, which will be the bottom piece of what we're making, I'm going to cut at the very beginning of the second ridge. I'm going to go in using my scissors. I'm making a triangle so I can get in and cut out a large chunk, which allows me to get my scissors in and cut directly on that line. All right, we have our first part done. You will not be using the rest of your bottle, so we'll just get that out the way. And then we will start on our second bottle. Now, we will be cutting the first part just like we did in the first bottle, but the second part will be cut different, so make sure you're paying attention. Same thing we're gonna do is cut the bottle in half. Now, for this second bottle, we want to make sure instead of cutting at the bottom ridge, we want to cut at the top ridge. And what's going to happen is these two are going to fit together. Just wait for it. So let's go ahead and get this cut. Our next step is to find the natural connection that the bottle maker made. This is a seam in the bottle. It goes all the way from the top and the bottom. We're gonna follow that seam, and this is going to be how we're going to wrap it around the lamp stand. I think you guys are gonna start seeing where we're going with this. So we have everything cut out. As you can see, these two fit together. Now, I have a tip for you. You need to glue these prior to spray painting them. Yes, we are going to be spray painting them. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue the one with the ridge first and only. We want to make sure that our glue gun is on low. So, it might look like a glue mess right now, but the spray paint will cover all of that. Another great tip to do is to do a little bit of glue here, the top, do a little bit more glue here at the top and go all the way around until you get to the split. And it's going to give you a great, beautiful cylinder looking ornament like this. So that's one down, we have six more to go, meaning we're gonna make seven of these, which means you're gonna need 14 of those two liter pop bottles. So we are going to be taking napkin rings. These are simple wooden napkin rings you can find at any type of craft store. I think I got a bag of these for $4. You're gonna need nine of these rings, okay? so. Let's get into how we're going to use them for this project. I have my handheld wooden cutter and I'm going to take it to the base of the 
wooden ring. Seriously, it's that simple. These are so easy to cut. I'm gonna follow that line on the other side of the ring. And I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna do that for the rest of these and I need to have nine in total. All right, so I'm gonna gather up all of my items that I just made and I'm gonna go outside and get these spray painted. Let's go. So we have everything painted and everything dry. Now it's time to assemble. But before we get started, I do wanna give you some tips so that you don't run into any type of hiccups when you're making this at home. When you are spraying your napkin rings, of course we're cutting them in half, but we're spraying a lot and we don't wanna cut them in half and then take hours trying to figure out which ones piece perfectly together. When I cut them, I laid them side by side knowing that that was the match. When they were dry, I picked them up and I put a little bit of painter's tape on them to keep them together. But you'll be able to see all of this when you see me put them together. So we want to squeeze that together. You can use the tape that we previously had to hold it in place. Now we're ready to add our first bolt. Open, slide into place. Again, we want to use our heat gun on low and we want to do small dots along the way or small lines. We do not need to do the whole thing all at once. So I'm going to overlap those holding it down, really focusing on the tops to assure that it's adhered together. All right, that is dry and in place, and it fits perfectly inside the ring. And we'll just repeat that until we get to the top. So we are at the last part, and this is absolutely gorgeous, but we want to make sure that it has a definite end or a beginning. So we're going to double up our rings at the top, and we're going to glue those together as well. All right guys, so you can see that I put on here a custom shade that I had around my house. And of course it's been adorned with this amazing pom-pom fringe. Now you can use the shade that comes with this lamp, but of course you wanna pull it all together. Hi, I'm Farima with Handmade, and today I'm gonna show you three ways to add a designer look to some plain lampshades. Let's get lit. <laughs> so a lamp like this would cost you well over $100 at a high-end store but I'm gonna show you how to DIY this lampshade with a $3 bottle of dye in under 10 minutes. Start by boiling a gallon of water. Next, you'll completely saturate the lampshade with water. A cotton lampshade works best for this project because it absorbs the dye. Add a packet of powdered fabric dye. We went with denim blue. Next, add 1 4th cup salt. Then, stir until dissolved. Place the bottom edge of the lampshade in the dye. Then, use a paintbrush to pull the dye halfway up the lampshade. Place the bottom edge of the lampshade back into the dye and let it soak for 10 minutes. Remove the lampshade from the dye and blow dry it to prevent the dye from bleeding any further. Set aside to dry overnight. We're gonna give this plain lampshade an applique look with just a scrap of fabric. I'm going to carefully cut individual flowers out of this fabric. After you've cut all your flowers, arrange them in your desired pattern before attaching them to the lampshade with fabric glue. We're going to add pom-poms to this lampshade. I'll show you how to make one. To make a pom-pom, wrap yarn around your fingers 100 times. Slide the bundle off your fingers and tie another piece of yarn tightly around the center. Cut the loops and trim.
Attach the pom-poms to the lampshade with glue. We spaced ours evenly, but you can attach yours in any pattern. I'm Sarah Reed, and if you saw my handmade home tour, you might have noticed a incredible embroidery hoop chandelier in my living room. A dear friend of mine made it for my wedding. His name is Rob Ebeltoft. He is an artist, an art installer, a set designer, and I just handed him things I had been collecting for years, literally years and years, um, and said, please make a beautiful thing for the top of our tent. Thank you very much. We're not gonna make a chandelier as big as he did because that would take forever, but I'm gonna show you how to make a little home-sized version that anyone could make for their house. So I have embroidery hoops of different sizes. I think that's important. You want lots of different shapes and sizes and even materials. They make plastic ones in colors, they make metal ones. These are new, but I encourage you to go to thrift stores because they are covered in them and they will often have sizes and shapes that you can't really get at a big box store. And then I have lots of fabric options. Assemble this chandelier. I suggest using maybe three or four different families. So I've got, this is a vintage sheet and I've got these quilting pieces and I've got this ticking. So you put the hoop on, make sure the fabric is really taut, tighten it up. It will feel like sacrilege and it will feel hard and sad, but we're gonna cut it. I am not precious about this. I don't need these to be perfect. I think the beauty of this craft is that it looks really handmade. <laughs> so we're just gonna keep doing that. We're gonna piece them together loosely with zip ties and it's gonna be a big thing like this and then we're gonna pick it up and attach it to itself, zip tie that loosely so it will begin to take shape. Wherever you want your zip tie, you're gonna take your craft knife and you're gonna poke a hole so maybe protect your surface or don't care about your surface. And then you're gonna take a zip tie and you're gonna be really careful with the craft knife. <laughs> you want the zip tie to be on the inside. You're gonna find your hole, poke it up, poke it down. So you'll pull it, but really loosely. So it wiggles can do that. Then I'm gonna attach another one. And this is why you want this fabric to be really taut. If it were really loose, this would be much harder to cut. So now I'm gonna do this about a hundred more times and we'll see what shape it's taking. I have three different sizes, the same number of hoops of every size. You could vary them up, but I wanted to make this one as simple as possible. Now I'm going to take the top row and cinch them together. And by doing that, because these hoops are smaller, it's gonna start drawing it in and giving it structure. It's important at this point to not cinch these closed. So I'm doing all of these really loosely. Okay, now I'm going to connect the ends so that it can really start to take shape. Once we tighten these zip ties, it will take its final form. But before we can do that, we need to hang it up. We're gonna take ribbon, which I have pre-cut all the same length, and we're going to loop it through the tops of the embroidery hoops. Hi, you helping? What I wanna do is make sure all these ribbons are at the same length and level. Otherwise, the chandelier will be wonky. That looks pretty good to me. This is a temporary knot. And now, we're gonna hang it up and tighten it up. I'm just gonna get this out of the way for a second. It'll come back later. I'm gonna hang this right on the knot so that all the ribbons are the same length. Okay, 
Now, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna start tightening zip ties. This is a little like a corset. It's like something very floppy is all of a sudden really taking on structure. It is not important to tighten in any order. I'm going, I'm not going full tight, but um, I'll probably go around and tighten these several times. If you wanted to play around with it being more floppy, you can do that. You could even do this with wire, you could do this with ribbon. If you had embroidery hoops, you could probably make this out of things just at your house. So as a final touch, I'm going to attach these tiny cute little hoops and just dangle them at various lengths. And you don't have to puncture any of the fabric, you can just attach this to this. I'm just gonna loosely tie these for now and then I'll come back and snip them. You could hang them off of each other. You could go crazy. So we've added some structure by tightening the zip ties. We're gonna tuck in the bulb. Good. And then you wanna cut off the ends of your zip ties as close to the closure as I can. I'm getting the whole tail off. Otherwise, when you turn the light on, you might see all these little tails. And that's not pretty. Once you're finished, clip in all your little bits. You'll turn it on, see how it looks. Adorable!